So t- today, I get to the privilege of talking about, about uh, getting ready to tell your story. The title of my message today is Ready to Explain Your Faith. And just, just, just take it easy, don't, don't go panicking, because I'm going to make it really simple. You've got a story to tell, because God has done a work in you. And I'm going to help you to know how to tell that story, to get ready. That the, Paul, when he writes to the Colossians, he says, pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I'm here in change. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. So we should pray just right now that God would, uh, would work in our lives. Can we, can we pray that? Pray the scripture? Pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. So once you you pray right now, say, God, 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 would you open doors, open doors that seem to be shut, open doors. Oh, yes, he would place before you an open door that no man can shut. (laughs) Opportunities are coming to you in the name of Jesus to speak about this mysterious plan Thank you, Jesus. Help us through this message today to be ready for the opportunities that you will give to us, Lord. Thank you for the opportunities that are coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Do you know, this, this, this week, Thursday, went along to the mayor's prayer breakfast, a room full of pastors and reverends and, and all shapes and sizes, from the Greek Orthodox through, through to... The other end of the Salvation Army, <laughs> the, all, all, all kinds in the spectrum, but all, all talking about the fact that God is at work in our communities, which is beautiful. School leaders were there, counsellors were there, and, and of course the mayor was there because it was his breakfast, and talking about how God is at work in his life and in the lives of people on the Gold Coast. It's such a beautiful thing. God, God is at work in our community. I, I heard the same thing on Tuesday when I was sharing convening a meeting of pastor of pastors and denominational heads from the Baptist and the Salvation Army and Church of Christ and, and Wesleyan and, and a whole bunch of others and practitioners like me that are involved with looking after pastors and they were saying God is at work in our community and, and they're just, just beautiful things. I had a random phone call just recently because um, I have an online presence, someone going, I, I, I need a mentor. And I, so I have to ask a question, why do you need a mentor? I don't say it quite as bluntly as that. Just tell me a story. And, and uh, what's happening? And this, and this young man says, well, well, I've just recently arrived from mainland China and, and, and I've started looking on YouTube and I can see stories about Jesus and I want to follow him. Can, can you help me? And I said, so you started going to a church? Yeah, I have. Uh, well, cool. That's really good. That's, that's one of the best things you can do. And, and, and is there someone who can help you as a new follower of Jesus? And, they said, and he said, yes, yes, I asked them last week, but they haven't got back to me yet. I said, please, please go back <laughs> next Sunday and, and have, have a conversation. Go to the pastor and say, I'd really like someone to help me find how to follow Jesus. And, and it's just a random young boy. who grew up in China, (laughs) now here in Australia. God is at work in people's lives. I'm praying that you will have opportunities to see that and experience that and to be able to help them. Are you ready to participate in what he's doing? Are you ready? I I encourage you to make some notes because there's some questions I'd love you to be thinking about as we go through this. And ponder them, not just in your connect group, but use yourself and go, am I ready to participate in what he is doing? God is at work in the community. How do you know that? How do you know that? Well, he was at work in your life before you got here. Yeah? Wasn't he? You look back over your life and you can see his, his intervention. It could have been a conversation. It could have been a dream. It could have, could have, been, could have been something you read, something you heard, something, an experience that happened. It's... it's all, all those things go together. God works through those things. God was at work in your life before you met him. God is at work in people's lives, getting them ready to meet him. To get ready. Are you ready to participate in what's he doing? And, 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 and the scripture we just read, Paul, Paul says, hey, this is why I'm in chains. Why am I in jail right now? 
because I, I'm here because I need to tell his story. And some people here this morning might feel you're constrained. Someone's watching online and they're feeling constrained in their circumstances. I want to say to you, just, just stop for a second and relax and go, okay, why am I here in this where I'm feeling constrained? Is there an opportunity that God's got me here for? Is there a conversation? Is there someone I'm going to talk with? Is there something that's going to happen? You're about to do something, God, and am I ready, ready to participate in this? this? This is Paul. I'm in jail because I'm here to talk about Jesus. Well, what, a, what a phenomenal perspective of life. Kind of takes pressure off, doesn't it? Right now, where I am, I'm here. Why? Why? So, and, and this, this morning we're going to spend a fair bit of time looking into Peter. And, and Peter had this very same thing. You can not going to look at the scripture now, but you can make a note and look at it later. P- Peter, in, in 1 Peter 2, says, he brought, me out of, he brought us out of darkness into his light. Like, like he, he's, he's changed my life, like Pastor Adrian was talking about. He's changed my life. He's done something in me so I can broadcast this wonderful message. Why has he worked in your life? Why has he revealed himself to you? And you might say, so you could find him. But Peter and Paul both had this perspective, this is so I can tell someone else. And, and, and we do ourselves a huge disservice if we think the object is just us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Who? Your kingdom? Not my kingdom? To renew hearts with ancient love. Oh, you can have it all. Not you have it all. <laughs> so here's the text I've got for today. 1 Peter 3, 15 says, But give reverent honor in your hearts to the anointed one and treat him as the holy master of your lives. Oh, so you mean I'm not the master? And if anyone asks you about the hope living in you, always be ready to explain your faith. Always be ready with gentleness and respect. And great message last week, Mal setting us up, wrapping up Colossians with gentleness and respect, the way you live your life with others. If you're thinking about how do I make him master of my life and not me the master, you've got to go back and look, look at that whole series. That will really help you adjust and get him in charge, not you. Uh, maintain a clear conscience so that those who slander you for living a pure life in Christ will have nothing to lie about you and be ashamed because of their slander. Not me. This is not all about me. Uh, but but some, some people are saying, but, uh, but I couldn't do that. I, I, couldn't give, I couldn't explain my faith. Let me break this down really simple for you. you. You are not called here to give an account of your faith as an expert, opinion, an expert testimony. You know, an expert is, is like when they call in call in in a murder case, they get the psychologist on this or the psychiatrist on the stage on, in the witness box and say, so, okay, what is your learned opinion as to how this person interacted in this case? You know, w- were they a narcissist? Yes, is my expert opinion because they're, they have the ability to diagnose and, and to quantify that this is, this is what that person was about. But others in the trial will be called in and say, what did you see? You're the neighbor across the road and you saw someone coming. Who did you see? Well, I saw this person. Okay, cool. Are are, are you an expert? No, I'm just the neighbor. But that's a testimony and that's what's talked about here. Always be ready. So so there's there's this, here's how you tell your story. This is what I felt before. I met Jesus. This is what happened. And this is what's different. So what did you feel before? Well, before I met Jesus, I was feeling lonely. I was feeling lost. I was feeling like I didn't belong. 
I was feeling like I wanted to be in, but I felt on the outside, I felt, I felt oh, low, very low self-value. And what happened? Well, as a bunch of people I was with, they just took a real interest in me and treated me as, I was, as if I was a real person. And I go, oh, these are great people. And, and they, said, they said, well, why don't you ask God if you're there, would you show, me, would you show yourself to me? And so I did. I said, God, if you're there, would you show yourself to me? And, and, and I started seeing a change that was taking place in people's lives who were committing their lives to Jesus. I, I saw light coming where there was darkness. I, I saw a change in people's lives. And I go, I want that too. And when opportunity was given, I put my hand up and said, yeah, I want this too. And what happened? I felt free. I felt forgiven. Clean. Just wash clean clean, just brand new. I felt like I had a purpose. What was your life like before you met Jesus? What's a word to describe it? This is not, a, not just a rhetorical question. I'd love a response right now. Just one word. Yep, before. Messy, another word. I didn't hear. No, no peace. No peace? Less peace? Cool. Another one? Life before Jesus. Empty. Cool. 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 All right? And? Dark. Cool. And another one? Just, yeah. And you say, well, it's strong, but that's the reality. Guilty. Guilty. Filthy, guilty, fil fil messy, messy, filthy. Yes. Cool. All right. So, so see how easy that is? So what's your word? So spend some time thinking about what was life like before I met Jesus? How did you meet him? How did you meet Jesus? Come on. So, someone give me a, just a very short, no, no, I don't want a sermon. I just want to, how did you meet Jesus? You've read your Bible. Cool. Yeah. There was a person who, t who helped you. Beautiful. Come on. Another one. An invitation to church. Yeah, come on. Youth rally. Yeah. A book. Yeah. You prayed. Pray. Come on. We went to wedding. Come on. So like, this is normal stuff, but it's, but it's an interaction where this is what I did. And, and, and what's life like now? Come on. Peaceful. And... Hopeful, yeah, there's, there's some colourful and purposeful and another one, still messy. <laughs> no, so something's at work and, and, and it's a process, it's not, it's not, just, not just all 100% change but, it's, but it's, there's a change that's a happening. Yeah, well, I better get on with it then. Okay, so, so, so are you ready to tell your story? So what makes you ready? Well, please, please don't... Um, uh, make, make, him, make him your holy master. And we can, you can look into that in, this, in the story. So where is God at work? Peter, first of all, and you can read this later, it's 1 John, uh, sorry, John chapter 1 and verse 40, and, and it says how Andrew went to Peter and said, Peter, we found Jesus. Peter got there because of his brother. So where can you look first of all? Where's God at work in, you, in your family? One of my stories is, is my young sister, Roseanne, met Jesus when I was about 18. And I still remember the tears on her face as she's saying, I just need God in my life. God works in families. Ain't that true, Robin? And, and year after year after year in the life in our church, we've seen over the years, we've seen story after story as God works in families. God works in families. So expect him to work there. God worked in Peter's business partners, James and John. There's people you work with. God will work in their lives. But there's far more happening than what you could see 
There's a story in Acts chapter 10, and, and I'd love you to spend time reading that story. It's an incredible story. And, and P- Peter was praying, the, the very short picture of it is Peter was praying, and he gets this dream and this vision, and, and, it, and God's saying, I'm setting things up for you to go to this person's house whom you really shouldn't go to because you're a Jew, and Jews are not supposed to go to that sort of house or eat that kind of food, but I'm sending you there. And, and, as, and as, he, as he's having this dream, there was three men at the gate knocking, knocking on the door saying, Peter, is Peter here? We think he's here because we've been told to come to this house. God's put it in Cornelius' ha- heart to send us so that, so that Peter can come and talk to, with us about Jesus. So Peter's praying and God's speaking to him, but over here, Cornelius, God's at work in Cornelius' life and setting up an encounter, setting up this meeting, setting up this conversation, and Peter goes there, and, and, and it's really awkward. So don't worry if it's awkward to start with, and because and he, he, he starts out saying, I'm not supposed to be here. Jews are not supposed to be in your house. That's not, that's, you're an Italian. You're a soldier. Hello, this is wrong culturally. It's wrong politically. It is wrong for us to be here. It's really awkward. But, he's, but he's, he, says, he says, but it's clear that Jesus has arranged this. And then he starts talking about Jesus. And Jesus comes and, and, and the Holy Spirit falls upon these people and they start speaking in a language they've never learned. They start speaking in, in, in we call it glossolalia, tongues. And, and there's the Holy Spirit speaking out of, in, from inside of them. And it's just beautiful. And Peter says to his mates, well, we should see these people baptized as well because God's doing what he did in us in them. And a church gets formed. I, I, I love the song we were singing before, your kingdom come, your will be done. I, I want to build a house where your glory lives. And, and so see the object or the outcome or the, or the work of God in people's lives as it's more than just the conversation He's, he's actually knitting people together in community into spaces and places where his spirit lives. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit cascaded over all of those listening to his message. The Jewish brothers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the people who weren't Jews, for they heard them speaking in supernatural given languages and passionately praising God. Are you ready? To participate in what God is doing? Are you ready? To give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope living in you. Always be ready to explain your faith with gentleness and respect. So I'm thinking we should finish this morning with this prayer. Pray for us too that God will give us many great opportunities to speak about this mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I'm here in change. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Why don't we spend a moment just talking to God today? Can we do that? Can we stand to our feet? If you need to sit, please sit. I just want you to move your heart towards God here today. Say, God, here am I in this place. (sighs) Here am I. Many of you are asking God for this opportunity. God, pray. God, we pray today that you'll give us many opportunities to speak about this mysterious plan concerning Christ. God, there's people in our world, our families, our friends, our workmates. Jesus, Jesus, give us eyes to see what you're doing. Give us ears to hear when your voice says, here, now. What do I say? Just only need to say what's happened what God's done because you're talking about him you're telling his story and how it's impacted you Jesus Jesus here today we're asking you 
incredible opportunities in our families, our friends, our workmates. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for being at work in our city, in the cities, wherever people are watching this, God is at work in your lives, your families' lives, wherever they are. Father, we bring them to you. Pray that you speak to them in dreams and visions, through things they read, through conversations they have. Father, give us opportunities too to talk about the hope inside of us. I oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Renew hearts with ancient love. <clears throat> Some of you standing here and saying, well, I've been the master of my life, but I want God to be my master. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. Maybe you've prayed a prayer like this in the past and Jesus come into my life and Maybe you haven't, but here today, I want you to come into a great relationship with him and submit yourself to him, him being your master, him being your Lord, living for him, for his purpose, your kingdom come, your will be done. Can we pray this prayer of consecration together? Say, Lord, come into my life, give my life to you, be my Lord and my master. Can we pray together? Dear God in heaven, we thank you for Jesus, that he died on the cross for us. Jesus, we welcome you as Lord of our lives to lead, to guide, and direct. Jesus, wash us clean and make us new. Renew our hearts with ancient love. <laughs> Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your strength. May your power flow through us into the lives of those around about us. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you begin to pray just right now? Begin to pray right now. Karebo dola barabade, ramasun dola maram dola barabdu. Oh, there's prayers of consecration going off all over this room. Jesus, here I am. Ramandela marabdu, rimundu la barabade. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.